Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday night Time in the Word weekly broadcast with our pastor and founder, William Whitfield. We are just happy that you've taken the time to tune in and watch us on social media. Today we continue in our series on prayer. Let us now go into the Word of the Lord with Pastor Whitfield. Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Woodfield coming to you on this Wednesday, July 2nd, 2014, welcoming you to our Wednesday night Time in the Word segment. We're still dealing with our series on prayer, but tonight we're going to be looking at the prayer of thanksgiving. Some of you have experienced some devastating things and things that are still going on in your lives, but yet you still have to find time to give thanks unto the Lord. Regardless of whether things are going the way that you wish for them to go, whether things are seeming like they're getting worse, but the scripture always admonishes us to give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. So let us pray as we go into the word of the Lord on today. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this your day. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. And God, we pray that even going through this lesson on tonight, it would break free the strongholds of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, that we in our lives will begin to give you thanks, that we will begin to give you praise and honor. And God, even come before you with a prayer of thanksgiving, for you are good and your mercy endure forever. So Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we're going to be going to Psalms 118, which I think is a great passage of scripture to use in our study on prayer for the prayer of thanksgiving. There are many other passages of scripture that we can use, but the prayer of thanksgiving is again a psalm that is being sung unto the Lord, thanking him for the things that he has done or about to do, or even in faith, sometimes we have to employ those muscles of faith. And throughout the course of this series, we're going to be thriving on belief, on faith, on trust, and love and devotion towards God, and thanking Him long before we see the answers. There was a song many years ago, Don't wait till the battle is over, shout now. And that's even a song that was taken from Scripture Uh, that even the Lord would have us to thank Him and even praise Him before we even see the victory come our way. And let's be honest, sometimes we just cannot see the victory. And that victory at times is elusive. And we can't always see our way through certain things. But by faith, we continue to traverse the land, and those things that we're going through, and to do so knowing that God himself is on our side and that he cannot fail us. So let us go into the word of the Lord again, uh, Psalms 118. It says here, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercies endure forever. So in other words, Oh, give thanks. This is when you got to talk to yourself. This is where you got to come out and talk to that despondent spirit. Speak to that bitter spirit. Speak to that angry spirit. Speak to that distrustful spirit. Speak to that disobedient spirit. Speak to that unyielded spirit. Speak to those things in your heart that your eyes see and agrees with what it sees. Speak to those things that seemingly won't move. Speak to those persons, those individuals, those circumstances and other things that are going on that seemingly is weighing you down or is weighing you down. But the thing is, it's the expression of thanklessness that can keep you in a state of where you are. Even on this week, I received some news that I did not want to hear and something that would ultimately, seemingly can cause a setback. 
But things that you look at with your eyes, you've got to learn that things aren't always the way that they appear. And sometimes things get worse before they get better. That has not shaken my faith or my confidence or my trust or my hope or my dedication to the Lord. Because I still believe that all things are possible through Him. And regardless of what may come your way, whether it's a phone call, a family member, a friend, an employer, a health situation, whether it's a bill or things of that nature, or things that will say that you cannot continue on in the state that you're in, or doing the good work that you're doing. But one thing I have resolved in my heart, that I will not allow what I see with my natural eyes to be deceptive to me. We must understand that God wants us to succeed in life in every area, in every aspect of our lives. That's why the Bible said that he would, that we would prosper even as our souls prosper. And when you definitively know the plan and the will of God that tends towards success and not failure and disappointment and ruin and degradation, then you understand that God wants the best for his children, even when he's taken us through trials and tests and what we perceive to be tribulations and difficulties, things that may not go our way, but yet he still has our best interest in mind. And when we learn the will of God in the mind of God and knowing what the word says and follow his character, follow his personality, follow what he says and what he speaks and how he moves and what he does, even when he corrects us, his correction always lends to a better way of obedience and living in him. So if we look at the object lesson here, that every adverse situation that comes in our lives, the Bible said that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, that are called according to his purposes. The question is, are you loved by the Lord? The answer should be immediately a resounding yes. The second thing is, are you called to fulfill the purposes of God? And if you're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, and especially if God has called you, there should be another resounding yes. So your spirit man, along with your carnal man, should be hollering out yes to the will of God. Although your flesh does not love what it's dealing with. And sometimes we long to be freed from this life, to be at peace. But will we really be at peace if we leave this earth without fulfilling the will of the Lord? So the psalmist goes on to say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. The question is, Have you considered the Lord to be good? Have you tasted, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good? The Bible says two things here. He says, oh, taste and then see that the Lord is good. So first and foremost, when we take a taste, we think of the mouth and the tongue and the taste buds. This is not talking about your humanistic tongue. This is talking about the tongue of the spirit man that have tasted of the heavenly goodness in the spirit and have discerned that this thing is good and it is marvelous in our eyes. We have tasted of the goodness of the Lord and we see spiritually that this is good, that this is great. That this is substantial, that this is wonderful, that this is mighty. This is greater than anything that we can ever conceive of in our thought 
processes. This thing tasted so wonderful that I'm willing to just say, oh, thank you. Think about it. How many of you have tasted something that have just awed you, floored you, wowed you, and just brought forth an exhilaration from your spirit, from your soul, that you had to seek out the persons that made it. And it became a part of the staple of your life that you had to pursue it and consume it continuously to add to your fulfillment and your enjoyment. God is saying the same thing here. Come to me, my son. Come to me, my daughter, and taste of me. But when you come and taste of me, I want you to express back to me your gratitude for me and what I have done and what I am going to do. Tune in by weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. It takes muscles of faith. It takes the stamina of faith. It takes the ability of faith. It takes the mindset of faith to thank the Lord for what he is going to do. Although you have not seen it or felt it in your spirit, there is nothing in you or around you that states that God is going to move and do something, but yet in honor of God and who he is and what you know he is capable of and what you know he can do, you begin to just express gratitude and thankfulness. In prayer, even when you go to pray, you can't pray what you want to pray, but the expressions of thanksgiving exudes from your heart. There are times that I've gone into prayer and the only thing that I could do was just thank the Lord, knowing what lies ahead but still yet thanking the Lord. And honestly, right now in my spirit, man, I am thanking the Lord for what he is about to do, things that he is going to overturn, doors of opportunity in ministry and in life that he's about to open. I thank God for the prophetic utterance. I thank God for the words that he has already spoken over your life. I thank God for the healing that he has already decreed for your life. I thank God for that financial failure that you're facing, that he is overturning it right now and supplying the need through whatever sources he deemed necessary or fit or worthy to supply. I thank God for that loved one of yours that is strung out on drugs that God is about to release and set free from that addiction. I thank God for every child that is lost. He is going to return. I thank God for every marriage that has fallen apart that he is going to resurrect the love in it, and he's going to prevent you from going to the divorce court. I thank you for every child that is walking around in the bitterness of their heart towards their parents, that God is going to upset them and overturn that thing and cause a greater dimension and level of love to come towards their parents to understand that their parents were there just to build them up, to encourage them and prevent them from walking into a trap or a path that they should not have walked into. I thank God for those of you that are out on the mission field, trusting and believing God to bring, bring great deliverances and rescues and to answer prayers and to save multitudes of souls because of the preach word that you're about to proclaim out of your mouth. I thank God for all those that are working in missions, feeding 
and educating children that were abandoned and rejected and despised and discarded, that God is going to anoint you afresh and God is going to anoint suppliers of your needs that have the resources, the food and the money. I thank God for you that are in war-torn countries that are believing God for your safety and even for you to be able to get out of that place. I thank God for those of you that are being persecuted for your faith, although it's not pleasurable in the moment, but God said power shall come out of this and all men will know that you are the sons of God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Every thankful heart that is willing to express gratitude and prayer unto God, God said, I'm designing a designer miracle for you. I am designing a way of escape for you. I am designing a Red Sea especially for you. I'm designing a Jordan River especially for you. I am designing a cave that you will break out especially for you. There are things that I'm about to do for you that will blow your mind just because you've taken the time to express your gratitude towards me. Now, it's amazing in the day and the age that we're living in that people see manners as being a thing of the past, a thing that dates you, a thing that is antique in its nature. When all of us love it, when someone thanks us for something that we've done, I don't care what your level of ego may be or whether you have no ego, everyone wants to be appreciated for something that they have done. And God said, if you could just use your faith, I know that you're weary. God said, I know that you're weak. I know that you're disappointed. I know that you're going through trials and difficulties. But God said, if you could just lift up your head and in an act of faith with the tears rolling down your face, face with things that are at your path that are telling you you're going down for the count let me tell you if you would just begin to thank the Lord for all that he has done for you in the past all that he has done up until this very point Thank him for even being in the state of mind that you're currently in. You're saying, preacher, how can I thank God for this state of mind? Because when you thank God and he delivers you from that state of mind, you will reflect back on it one day and you will give God thanks. You will give God praise. Because you will understand great is the Lord that has delivered me. And has kept me alive. The Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Because his mercy, the thing that you did not deserve. But in his loving kindness and in his mercifulness and because of the great expanse of his mercy, he chose fit to take another course, a go in another direction that was initially intended for you to walk down. And God said, I have a change of heart. I have a change of mind. And I'm going to make sure that my son or my daughter are exonerated. I'm going to make sure that they have the provision that they need. I'm going to make sure that they know when they call upon my name, I'm so honorable that I will answer in favor. And I will dry all their tears 
And I will wipe away all of their disappointment. And I will wipe away all of their failures. Because they've taken the time to thank me. God said, trust him and believe him. Watch him overturn things that were against you. Let me say that again because I heard it in my spirit. God said, watch me overturn things that were against you. When you begin to praise me and thank the God of heaven. And when I say me, I'm talking about God, not me. We're talking about God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, our Savior. When you begin to praise God, God will move on your behalf. He said, put the scripture to test. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy. For the Lord, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Because his mercy endure for Eve e ever. They said, let Israel now say that his mercy endure forever. Let the whole national heritage of God say that his mercy endure forever. Let the house of Aaron say, now say, that his mercy endure forever. Let the head of the priesthood of your home, if you're the head of the home, whether you're in a single home, live by yourself, whether you're a single mom, whether you're a single dad, whether you're a husband, or whether you're the saved person in that domicile. God said, let the house of Aaron, the chosen priest, the chosen priest household that is worthy to offer sacrifice unto the Lord, let the house of Aaron now say, that his mercy endure forever. Let them now that fear the Lord, those that honor, that reverence the Lord, say that his mercy endure forever. Listen. Listen to what the psalmist says in verse 5. I called upon the Lord in distress. <laughs> That's why I mentioned it earlier. He said, I called upon the Lord in distress, when things were falling apart, when things were at its worst, when they looked like there was no hope, no rescue, he says, I call upon the Lord in distress. I was going down, I was sinking, I was failing. I was about to lose it all. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me, listen, and set me in a large place. God blessed me to be in something greater than the failure that was before me. Let me say it again. God set me in a place where failure was minuscule compared to the place in which he set me in in answer to a distressing cry. But the master of the sea heard my feeble cry and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. The Lord, he goes on to say, I called upon the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is on your side.
Then he goes on to say in the latter part of verse 6, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Listen, he said, the Lord is on my side. You got to understand, the Lord is on your side. I will not fear. Don't fear a thing. When we talked about fear in reference to God early, that was a reverential fear. This type of fear, verse 6, is a devastating, destroying, depleting fear that will cause you to have anxiety, sleepless nights, overly concerned, anxious. And looking at it through the mindset that certain failure is imminent. When he says here, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? This is the posture and the mentality you've got to take in faith. What can man do unto me? Man can do nothing unless God releases it. And if man does something that is not in the will of God, God himself will reverse it. Let me say it again. God is in the reversing, the curse reversing business. I don't care who pronounces a curse over you. I don't care who pronounces failure over you. The final say goes to our great and magnificent God. What can man do unto me? As a matter of fact, draw out a list of what he could potentially do unto you under the cons and under the pros. You only need to write one statement. What can man do unto me? And I would preference it with this statement that God cannot reverse. That God cannot overturn. That God cannot prevent. That God cannot shield me from. That God cannot deliver me from. That God cannot speak. And things change immediately. I got happy and I had to add to that list more than one. When you talk about God and you're thankful to God, you just get carried away with him. And you can't just stop. It's just like eating something that slogan used to be, you just can't eat one. You cannot just come up with one adjective, pronoun, adverb, or verb that describes our God or one sentence. When you really know God, you get carried away because you know and you have proven and you have understood that God has delivered us from multiple things. And he goes on to say, the Lord take of my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. The qualifier here is, if anyone is walking around with hatred in your heart towards you and is unjustified, God will vindicate you. And even if they feel as though it's justified, when God has forgiven you, it is unjustified. And it becomes a disconnect. That's why God could take a trickster in Genesis and turn him around to be a blessing, Jacob, and cause him to be an honorable man and a blessing to multiple people and nations. God can change our nature. He goes on to say, Therefore shall I see that my desire upon them that hate me it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Don't put your trust in man. The arm of flesh will fail you every time. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, politicians, people and places of authority. All nations compass me about every single situation that you name, can name, that has brought 
some type of aggravation and vexation to your spirit has all compassed you about. But in the name of the Lord, thankfulness will give you a warrior's mentality. But in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They compass me about, yea, they compass me about. But in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. Your thankfulness and your praise of adoration and your worship unto God breaks the back of the enemy. They compass me about like bees, stinging me on every single side. And I could not find a way of escape. And even when I bat at them and fought them, they still begin to sting. But... They are quenched as the fire of the thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy this aggravation. I will destroy this thing that is causing frustration. I will completely annihilate this thing that is bringing vexation. By the name of the Lord. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord help me. Everything that is thrust against you is, is designed to cause you to fall. But he goes on to say, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song and is become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You will not die before you had a chance, an opportunity to share your testimony and to declare the workings of the Lord. I decree life over you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And this goes on to say in verse 19, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them. And I will praise the Lord, this gate of the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, and I beseech thee, O Lord. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be they that he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. You are the house of the Lord. And when you go to the house of the Lord, you will bless the Lord from out of it. God is the Lord, which hath showed us light. Bind the sacrifices of my heart. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar, to the strength of God. Thou art my God. When you have a thankful and grateful heart, you come to the conclusion. When you see God move, that he is your God. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, and I will exalt thee. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Embrace the prayer of thanksgiving. Because the thanksgiving will destroy the yokes of the enemy. This is Pastor Whitfield saying God bless you. And enjoy the remainder of your week in the 